Okay, 10 minute game. Let's turn the sound off. Although it's not that loud really, but hey. I'm going to develop the knight. So this series is around mastering the art of casual chess play. Just to improve the game. So maybe you want to just enjoy the game a little bit more. And, you know, nothing serious. You just want to basically understand the game a little bit more. So smaller pieces attacking higher pieces usually can't be wrong so long as your position is okay. So the knight attacking the queen usually can't be wrong. Going for simple x-rays as well. So the bishop coming through here is x-raying through to a higher piece which is the queen. And note that the queen has moved twice now. So they've kind of delayed their development of their other pieces. And they've moved yet again. So we could attack the queen again with the knight. Or we could develop another piece before we do that. They are actually attacking the b pawn. So let's continue with the smaller piece attacking the higher piece. And this is not guaranteed when I'm talking like this. It sounds like, oh yeah, he's got all the moves done down pat. No, I don't. I'm just looking at what's actually happening on the board. And when the opponent does something really computerized or really strong or whatever then i fall foul like everybody else would so the knight is on the rim at the moment but it does have a safe place to come back so our focal point is on king safety let's just bring the bishop out are we bringing it to a nice place though we don't want to bring it here because this pawn is supporting this area here so it would get forked so we could just bring the bishop out in readiness to maybe attack this area at some later stage depends on what the opponent does next so they're attacking the knight the knight can come here it is a nice position but i think it won't last there too long because the knight will get exchanged or the bishop just takes it off the board just to open up the pawn here so we could come back here i'm going to jump it into the center of the board if the bishop does take i don't mind doubling the pawns here because we have enough pawns to support that area so the opponent's moving quick. King's safety is key. Before you go jumping into king's safety, sometimes there is some magic that you can get just before you go. So we could x-ray through to their queen with the bishop, but we've already moved the bishop. So do we need to um, lose any sleep over that? Let's go and castle king's side. So now our king is half decently safe. But it's not fully safe just because you've castled, because you can get smother mated and all sorts of stuff. So now they're charging down with the Scud missile. So I'm actually going to bring the bishop, get it into the game, X-ray through to the queen. Next thing is I'm looking at, well, what, what do we do with this white square bishop? If the knight gets taken off, we can bring it here, looking to exchange the queen off. Very simple, basic stuff. Because the highest one is the queen. If you get that off the board, if you're just playing casually, then You've got a better game to play with because you play more chess then. Sometimes though, if the queen is just stuck on the back, like my queen is stuck on the back as well, it takes a little bit longer for the game to really find its feet. So we could just block this pawn down, but it doesn't look too activated. So we want to right, really try and get some activation going. The knight's attacking the pawn here. Let's simply support the pawn with a pawn. So the queen now has moved, it's got a diagonal towards this, the king area. So that's the area that probably we need to be concerned about. What do we want to do next? Take the knight off the board. I'm going to take the knight, keep it simple. Okay, just trying to clear the board a little bit and see what is actually happening. I want to hit this pawn here to make some space for my white square bishop if they do take. And if they don't take, we take anyway. Because at the minute it's stuck in the middle of the board and I'm, I don't have a clear way in. I'm taking the pawn anyway. And going to take the bishop as well. So just clearing the board just to have a look and see what's happening. I am actually going to challenge the queen to see whether or not they want to exchange. And it further advances the pawn up the board. I'm not expecting this pawn to survive. We may get a rook behind it. I'm going to take and the knight probably is going to take. 
and at this point we can look might be a bit slow bringing the rook here to attack the knight here because he's probably just going to prop drop a pawn down so i'm actually going to hit this pawn and see if they take if they take then the rook gets up hopefully looking to develop and i'm actually going to take because if he does take he loses his rook and we get the rook for free So as you can see, we're trying to clear house, okay? So he's not done that. So we could actually take the pawn if the rook takes take, and then we've got three linked pawns and maybe supporting the pawns coming up. I think we're going to risk it for a biscuit and go for a rook exchange. As we already know, he doesn't have to exchange anything. He can just come here, attack in the pawn. Helps us to further advance the pawns up a bit. So let's move this pawn. This poor pawn here, I'm gonna to have to bring the rook here and somehow, not maybe not that one obviously, somehow get the knight up. So he's got two pieces on there. So this is going to be more interesting, I think. If we push onto the knight, knight is gonna come here, he's attacking this pawn, then he'll have a two on one. So I think if we push this pawn first, then it stops the knight from coming here. Then we can push this so then he'll have to come around. So it's coming around for this pawn. And I think it is a move order thing. So if we pushed and he takes. And then we push. And he takes. We take. No, he gets a back rank. And so. Don't really want him sitting here. We push here, he sits here, he's blocking everything off. I'm gonna hit him anyway. If he sits there, we've got our knight, we can start moving our knight in. That's what I'm thinking anyway. There must be something here. I've got three linked pawns, yeah. So he's, he's in. Let's get the knight up. That might have been a bit of a knee jerk reaction. That actually I maybe could have done that a bit better. So if we push here, and then we get a check. And we've still got the two linked pawns, but he does have a back rank mate. So think about it. Take time. Knight here. Knight here. Rook still defending on the back and then make some space for the king. Let's look at what they can potentially do to us keeping it dirt simple as casual chess players you know just keep it nice and steady and simple bring the knight up attacking the rook trying to make space to get up to support the pawns going up we could push this pawn but his knight is defending all these areas so we want to get his knight out of the way so attacking the rook so if we get to this spot then we're challenging the knight which we are so we're going to challenge the knight and then these pawns, one of them should get promoted. The king is on the other side of the board. They may resign at this point. Oh, they're not. So we can push. Has he got a checkmate check on us with the knight on the king? No. We can push. The knight is going to move and then the rook is going to be on the pawn. We can push and then the knight is not going to be. So let's do that. Push this one. Oh, okay. Looks like we're getting a queen and getting the knight off the board and then resign. So that felt very smooth did that game. I'm um, typifying the stuff we were talking about all the way through the game, keeping it simple, but realistically, again, looking at what the opponent was attempting to do and blocking off their attempts as best possible and then from there just developing advantage advantage especially with the pawns and um, keeping the structure nice and steady so at least we've got a, mo a pawn majority on this side and supporting this um, pawn structure to eventually get a promotion so that's how you as a casual chess player um will be focusing your development so that you can enjoy the game a little bit more. You can tell a story about how you're playing the game rather than the game playing you. Okay, 10 and 0, continuing the how to master 
casual chess play. Just so you enjoy the game a little bit more and, um, you know, feel like you're being able to give the opponent a bit of a game. Alright, so we like to keep things simple. I mean, they've given us a pawn here, um, but have they really? That's the question I'm asking myself. They have, and maybe we can make them pay the price for giving us a free pawn. Usually when the gambits are taking place, they always kind of get the pawn back because of some set play type thing uh, like this, you know, the queen coming and attacking. So don't lose too much sleep over that fact. I, I think I will go with the bishop attacking the queen first because then we're going to be supporting this area because then if the bishop did take, then we'd be able to support the pawn with the bishop. So keeping it dirt simple. In my head, I like to try and look at the position of my pieces. They're given another pawn, so why not take it? Let's just take it. They're trying to free up space. They're trying to be aggressive with their play. I'm fairly happy with that. Where we've got three minor pieces developed, they've got one piece developed because they've done two pawn moves and they've done a queen move. So we're fairly comfortable with that. Basic chess, try and get your minor pieces developed um, as soon as possible but it's got to be appropriate development because you might not have to this is where we go and attack the queen with a smaller piece just in case they're more to set they may still continue with this just to double the pawns or get the queen or whichever all right so he's come back around again attacking the knight so he's looking for the two or you know this two thing getting this pawn for free type situation is there anything else that can be done? Could bring the queen up supporting that attack rather than bringing the bishop back again. So I'm going to bring the queen up and support in this time. They're probably still going to go with the bishop taking because they're going to double our pawns up. So when you're looking at your open, when you're starting your game of chess, the opening phase, whichever you want to call it, in the opening phase, it can be quite tricky if the opponent is coming at you all aggressive and huffy and puffy and like you feel like you're not getting a uh, you're not getting time to breathe. It's those moments where you just take your time and have a look at what it what is it that they're realistically attempting to do, and if you can try and block it off, um, more times out of ten, you then end up in a half decent position because you're sort of stopping each phase of their attack but you're actually increasing your attacking potential as well it's a weird psychology i think the better defenders are the better attackers in the game of chess so we've got them thinking um obviously the thing oh they're taken so yeah doubling the pawns oh they're not they've gone for a, a freebie they've gone for greedy munching but it's not giving them an advantage. They're going for another greedy munch as well uh, with this um, bishop attack here. So this player thinks they're a little bit slick, really. So I'm going to bring the bishop here, x-raying through to their weak pawn in front of the king. And if you can see the position I'm trying to look for, obviously it's easily defended, but it gives them something to think about. Key thing, giving your, the opponent something to think about like what they've done with their queen, giving me something to think about. It's going for this doubling aspect, but we're attacking their higher piece. Can't really. So it's actually gone back. So we could go here, attacking the pawn, or we could take his rook off the board. Doesn't have a dark squared bishop, so we could just take the rook off the board with the queen. So sometimes when you see these aggressive openings, there's big holes in the back of their you know, a back of their position. So they've like only moved the bishop, they've only moved the queen and they've moved like two or three pawns and the position has ended up, oh, and they've resigned. So that's one way. Well, it's the continued way of trying to improve as a casual chess player um, just to get a little bit more enjoyment out of your game. Um, simple, direct moves, remove pieces where possible. Um, and also just look at the position on the board and dealing with aggressive type players there are holes in their back end 
they're just trying to cloak and dagger it to make it look like they have got a fierce attack going. And it will work if you then follow their lead. If you take a bit of time to have a look and say, well, okay, I'll try and block this off and improve my position. That will enhance the improvement of your casual chess play. Okay, mastering the art of casual chess. Simple moves. Just pushing the pawn in the center. Try to manage the area in the center. We're going to push again with the pawn onto this pawn. Let's grab with the knight. Take the knight off the board. Simple. And shall we bait a pawn? Usually, yep. Let's grab and then hit the king and take the bishop off the board. Excellent. Simple. No airs, no graces. Let's castle. And as a casual player, you want to be looking to improve your position. I think giving our king a bit of company because it looks a little bit alone. You might feel that your castle is really protecting you, but it isn't really. The more pieces I think you can get towards your king area. Unless you've got some obvious like mate threat already settled in the early part of the game. Um, and then go for it and focus on that. But for us, really, if we're looking at just developing, have that psychology of, well, my king needs a little bit of company in all seriousness. So I'm just bringing my knight across here. I'm looking to bring the knight across here. And as they've castled on the king's side, that means we can maybe start looking to attack towards their king's side. Queen can't come here because the knight is defending. So I'm actually going to swing the knight across to give my king some company. Small potato support of the pawn here. The B pawn obviously is going to be attacked, but we're mindful that the knight could attack their queen. The queen has moved. And what did we just say about the B pawn? B pawn is always going to be attacked. So we could defend it with the queen and look to double the pawns here and look maybe to get this pawn, but they'll be putting more pressure here, but we can push the pawn up. So it doesn't look too bad if we did go for the queen exchange. What else can we think of doing? Could bring the queen here, but it's not really doing anything dynamic. And the knight was looking to jump into this spot. The queen has gone. The knight could attack the queen, baiting it down, but he does have a 2 on 1. So I'm going to go with the initial thought that I had, which was going for the trade and just taking here. They'll focus on attacking these pawns. We can push. And as I've mentioned before, we're not finding the best moves in any way, shape or form. It's a matter of feeling comfortable with what you're doing. Simple exchange. Just keep that dirt simple. They're always going to come for the B pawn. If we pushed, we think maybe they're going to try and get this pawn somehow. So the rook will come here and attack. We can support with ours. It does have a dark square bishop, but then we can bring the rook up and support. Knight is probably going to jump in here at some stage. Right, so let's push this pawn. Just trying to break it down. Yeah, so the rook does come. So we're just going to bring the rook here. It may look to double up with the rooks. So then at that point, if we do take push, then it maybe pushes and we take. And then he's got a two on one on that pawn. And the bishop does come. We mentioned the bishop coming. So we can come here, but this rook can't come and support. So two on one is going to win out for them in that event. So we have a stealth bishop. Is the stealth bishop going to catch them unawares? And we did say the knight was going to be jumping here. So we do have a bit of a fork situation with the pawn. It's not a major fork, but we're going to hit the rook and hit the pawn as well. Because they have a two on one. And then this is where the two on with the two on one with the rook is going to kick in. So we could actually take and hit the rook, then the rook takes, then we take, and that's probably a little bit better for us. So I'm going to take with the rook. We're not going to win this pawn because we can't support this pawn unless, of course, the knight comes here. So we go here like this, then the rook comes across to attack, bring the knight here, but then the pawn drops. So then we'll have to go here and then they win the pawn. So we could go here attacking their knight, but then the bishop takes. So they're going to be a pawn up either way, it looks like. Is there anything else that we can do? We've got plenty of time. I don't think we can save the pawn, but we could go for a back rank mate. 
if it does take. Oh, and they're taking too long, so they're gonna see it. Okay. Oh, they haven't. Oh, maybe the bishop can go back and defend. Damn. Or the rook come. Well, the rook's not coming there. The bishop's coming to defend. And he's got his own back ranker, so we'll have to sort that out. Although the bishop is protecting this square. Yeah, there's no deliberations. He has to bring the bishop back. So again, it's things keeping, giving them something to think about. I mean, I've got things to think about now. I probably can't rush to do anything else. I need to just give my king a little bit of space. So I probably need to push the pawn once the bishop comes back. I don't think there's anything else else. I'd be, I think I'd be a bit silly if I did do something. The bishop is protecting this square, but it's not got any protection on it. So the knight could then move. So bishop goes there and then, because if we attacked the knight, he could come down in theory here, but then the knight just jumps in here to block. And then the rook has to move, but then he'll come around the back and get the pawn. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not set in stone at all. It's a little bit tricky. But as a casual chess player, um, for me, the idea is to try and be able to upset the, the players that believe they're half decent at chess, you know. And if you can just come in there as a casual player and, and upset their rhythm upset their gameplay and strategies just by giving them things to think uh, think about keeping things simple taking stuff off the board appropriately and um, finding better positions for yourself while you're doing it then it makes it more enjoyable game so they've gone into deep think but i'm not sure there's a deep think thing because the king can't move the only thing that can come is here maybe they've not seen that the bishop can come here maybe they're just thinking the rook has to come back If you're not familiar with these positions, nor, or nor, normally you, you might be unaware that the bishop can come back to defend the, the king, or if the knight's here, then well, if the knight was here, then he could come back and defend, or if it was here, he'd be able to def to defend. So little things like that, looking at those things, even in, for your own game on your own side, if somebody's done this type of um, threat type thing, I wouldn't get away with it now, because obviously. I'd take his rook off the board with the bishop. Say if that bishop wasn't there and my knight's in this position, I wouldn't get away with it because the knight is not protecting the king. The knight comes in, but then the rook would be able to take the knight off the board and still get the check mate. So it has to be in an appropriate position like their bishop is. And they're taking a really long time over this. And again, sometimes they just don't see it, you know, if you're not used to see, not used to it. I, I remember I never used to know that, you know, I never used to know that it's a simple thing of putting a piece in front of your king to, to protect. So it's quite magical when you do actually find it. But they're taking this long, you, I think they're thinking that's the only piece that can go, which is the rook. So my head's going, it's not over. I'm going to have to, we've still got a game going here. He's still got advantages that he can take up, um, you know, can take quite easily. Getting our pawn off, all sorts of stuff. So we're still going to have to put a lot of work in. And the signal is not gone, it's still there. So I don't want to harp on about, oh, well, you know, mastering the art of casual chess play because they may come back, you know, the phoenix may arise for them. But this mini series is about mastering the art of casual chess play. And, you know, you might go, you know, how can you master casual chess play? 
Well, you can because you're not rate you're not rated in that sense. You know, all you want to do is improve your game, and it's to your own standard that you're mastering it. It's not to any sort of rating standard within any official body. Um, all you're doing is for yourself, personal development in your chest. So you're mastering it, you know. And the better you get at mastering your own casual chess play, the more surprising you'll be playing against people who are rated. Um, so that's why we're calling it the master, the, the art of casual chess, because you, you're trying to master it, you're trying to get better and improve. You don't have to have a number at the side of your um, performance to master anything, you know. I mastered the art of wheeling on the Rally Grifter, but I didn't get a certificate for it. I didn't get somebody rating me to say, oh yeah, you're fantastic. You know, I could wheelie for a few, a few, <laughs> quite a quite a distance. You know, it was quite impressive, but I didn't get a rating for it. So that's what we're talking about with this casual chess. Is you don't have to be rated to be a good player at chess. If you want to improve, then improve on your own. Do it by yourself and enjoy your games a little bit more. Mastering the art of casual chess. It looks like this player's not actually finding the move. They've let me ramble on forever and a day. And there's zero increment on it as well, so there might be a bit of pressure on their time um, going forward if they do find the bishop move. Again, we'll still have to find appropriate moves, taking it nice and steady. But their time is not going to help them. There's no increments whatsoever on it, zero. The light is still on. Well, I hope you're enjoying the series so far anyway on this uh, mastering the casual, casual chess for yourself. And we'll keep going with this series uh, throughout the year. I think it's a good touch because we can focus so much on mastering to get a number and we don't we forget about mastering the art of actually playing the game of chess you know fictitious number you know just play the game and that's it play it casually relax and chill improve yourself improve your game not improve your number not here to improve our number here to improve my chess and the time's running out so it looks like we're going to take this one away but fairly informative I think for myself driving through the simple aspects of simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically got to add that word strategically because you're not just going out there and just being silly and taking everything off the board and really attacking higher pieces with lesser pieces and obviously taking charge of the key spaces and the key squares, etc. But we'll not focus so much on that because it seems to naturally fall into place if you're attacking key pieces, key squares, and developing your pieces appropriately and not moving them more than tw not moving more than once, even really. You can do it twice if it's appropriate. If you're attacking a higher piece and you're putting pressure on that higher piece, then that rule then changes a little bit. So long as it's improving your position on the board and you're not like overextending them, falling into their trap. But on the whole, developing as a casual chess player, you're keeping things dirt simple and keeping it real, focusing on blocking off the opponent's maneuvers. That then helps you to improve your position um, as you're going through and developing so that then you can start your own attacks. Well, no point in attacking if the opponent is actually squishing you block it off starts to improve your position then you can start charging forward a little bit putting pressure either onto the king the king area or higher pieces or removing um, lesser pieces moving higher pieces with lesser pieces or just basically strangulating their positions on the board tell you no mastering the art of casual chess I'm not a number, I'm a free man. You know, I'm not interested in that poor move actually. On this occasion. You know, you'd, uh, 
the times I've pushed this pawn when the bishop's come out here, the pawn takes, then the knight takes, the bishop really never takes, and it just sits there thinking that it's the um, the big cheese of the game. So that's why I've not actually gone for that. I'm going to bring our bishop out here. And this pawn, again, I'm not interested in that. I class it as a poison pawn. You kind of lose tempo, but the evaluation probably would say, just take it off the board, don't mess about. But it's like moving that piece twice and you lose that kind of tempo in terms of your own development. So I'm actually going to push this pawn now. Maybe attacking the um, bishop here. So it's, oh, it looks like they're going for the um, fried liver thing. Okay, the knight and the bishop for a rook. Let's see how that pans out for them. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Let's, are they wanting to go for it? If they don't, they've lost a little bit of tempo, timing, movement time um, in terms of, and they haven't. So you have to ask that question, well, why did you bother do that? Was it to actually get this pawn here? Have you baited this pawn for a reason? Is this bishop going to take this pawn off the board and then go here? And maybe the queen's looking to get down here somehow once this knight disappears. You never know. The more aggressive player would probably take the bishop, the pawn off the board once they've settled their queen. So you have to bear these things in mind. Why have they done certain things? Going to attack the knight. Could have brought this bishop here. Oh my god, what were we just saying? What were we just saying? The more aggressive player is going to do that. Wow. So if we take, then the queen takes, then the queen is in this area here. If we take, I'm not saying this is a good move that they've done, but um, the queen is going to be coming down. Let's take. Exact move that we're talking about. Why did the move then do the knight move? Because more times out of 10, they're probably thinking of taking the pawn with the bishop, then making space around our king area. Now he's starting, he's coming with the queen. Knight's probably looking to jump in here, so he's not interested in our knight whatsoever. But if we can take, but then maybe he's not bothered because then this pawn's going to open up and the rook's going to come down and he's facing our king. So they've done all of this for a reason. I'm going to bring the bishop up, trying to give my king a little bit of company now. I'm a little bit excited because they've done basically the forecasting of what we're talking about. And now we have to kind of develop from there. We're giving our king some company. We are thinking if the knight does take, then the pawn takes, then at least the bishop is around our king area. And then we can look to maybe get our own rook here because that's potentially what they were trying to do. But their king won't be able to get to the key square because the bishop's blocking it. Hope that wasn't too much. Ah, so they've gone a different way, but I'm actually going to put a check on the king. We're also check on the queen if he does move there. So now the bishop has ended up in that position that we want, which is to stop the king from moving here. So the king's going to have to come here when we put a check on their king. But it's not set in stone. We can go here with a rook check. Then he goes back and forward. So it would be like, um, what's, what do you call those things? Uh, repetition. So going to go with that. And you could go for a repetition at this point. That's the key thing. What my brain is thinking is this. If I go and put the check on, he moves. Then we bring this queen here. But then his knight comes here and he's going to get a, get our queen. So do we have time to... I don't think we do because he'll go for the rook thing here. So I'm going to put the check on. And I can get his queen off the board because his king can go here, but then we can take and the bishop's got the check on the king and we get the queen. So that's worked out really quite nicely for us in terms of position play, in terms of the prediction of the movement of the bishop, aggressive bishop attacking the pawn. I'm really glad that happened. Um, yeah. But I think if you don't see... If you don't know these things, then you get caught short by them. And it's like, what? What's happening? And then they start improving their position around your king because they've upset the rhythm of your pieces. But now you know. 
you have an insight into how to best deal with it. It looks like they've left the game. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was a um, that was a good game. Well, a good demonstration of keeping things simple. The key thing is really looking at what the opponent can potentially do to you, and then how can you then try and circumvent that maneuver as best possible to improve your own position without going crazy or anything. And I think this game typified that aspect of looking at what the opponent could potentially do. And they'd have left the game, so we'll claim victory on that.